I was kind of like interested when you're sharing the story about manager having to support the upcoming manager. And you yourself, I mean, like looking at your history and your career, right? Many people actually said that you have a particularly unique way of growing people. So the keywords that they mention most of the times is like you are growing them to do more self-reflection and by telling your story. So maybe you can teach us your unique approach here. Why do you have this kind of a unique angle on how you grow people through self-reflection and storytelling? Sure, let's see. When I first became a leader, a manager of an engineering team, and I started doing one-on-ones, I was told one-on-ones are something that I had to do. So, all right, let's get on to that. I noticed that most people didn't really want to talk about work. They wanted to talk about what was going on in their life. And it made me realize that everybody's different. Everybody has their own background. They've got their own stuff going on. They've got their lives to lead. Some people have very complicated situations. When you're in that space, you know, you bring this with you to work. So perhaps you look at somebody and you're thinking, gee, they're not performing as well as I thought they might in this role. But it may not be anything to do with a lack of skill. It might be more to do with how the rest of their life is evolving at this particular point in time. So I thought it's very important to take a step back and look at a person's situation in a more holistic way. Through that, I came to realize that there was so much more to growing other engineers than just teaching them raw skills. So at the end of the day, there's plenty of material out there. If you want to learn how to set up a Redis cache, you can find a tutorial on that. I don't need to show you myself. You'll probably figure it out yourself. And to be honest, it's probably best if you figure it out yourself than to be shown it by me. I think it's important as leaders to be humble and to be bold, to share your own failures and to share your struggles and challenges. If other people can see that you've gotten to where you are in your career, and still you've also faced a bunch of difficulties throughout your career, I, for one, I don't like public speaking. You know, I think it's really scary to get up in front of a bunch of people and talk about a subject that I feel like maybe everybody else in the room knows more about than I do. However, I've done it. And when I've done it, I've had a great time. And when you actually stop and think about it, then those people are in the room wanting to listen to you because perhaps you know more about it than you give yourself credit for. And it's about taking a deep breath and just calmly speaking about this thing that you do know a lot about. If I tell stories like that to other people who are sharing with me their fears about something, something that's maybe preventing them from growing, then they might have another think about it and they might find some courage to go and try that themselves. In other situations, I can give some insight into how complex a particular type of project was. For me, I found that almost every single job I've had has required some kind of data migration. Data migrations can be pretty complicated and often need to be done in many steps. When you describe something like that to a team, it might give them some more ideas on how they can approach it or why it's important to put something in place today that might help them later on. So I try very hard not to solve the problem myself anymore. Even as a leader in engineering, for some time, I felt like I needed to be able to solve all the problems. But I've gradually come to understand that I don't need to know how to solve all the problems, but I do need to act as a safety net. I need to ask the right questions at the right time tell some stories that might help inspire someone else to think about something slightly differently. I do seem to have had some success with this and I absolutely love hearing from engineers that I've worked closely with that I've had a positive impact on their life. I've made them think about something in a way that they just hadn't yet. And now they're sort of equipped with a tool that maybe they didn't have before to just question things. I think it's so important to question things and ask why. I really try to drive a curiosity mindset within engineering teams. We can get bogged down with the day-to-day. There's always a fire to put out or a new project that needs to be launched. When an issue arises or, you know, there's an incident or something, don't just fix it and move on because then you won't have learned anything from that. If you stop and think, but why did that happen? There will be a reason. Computers, not magic. We make them do what they do, right? So we are the people as engineers who have that control. We just need to remember that we are in control of the machine and we do need to just question why. And when we go down that path, we'll probably find something really insightful that will help us on our next problem. So, yeah, these are the sorts of tools that I use to lead teams and inspire engineers to do what we hired them to do in the first place, you know, be the best engineer that they can be. So on the self-reflection part, do you have some kind of common questions? Because you emphasize a lot about asking why, asking the good question. 
So this is for people like software engineers or any technical roles out there as individual contributor. Are there common self-reflection questions that you would probably want to share with us for us to think about and ponder ourselves? Yeah, so when I first join a team, in that first one-on-one that I schedule with people, I actually have a set of questions that I ask straight away. The first one being, how did you become a software engineer? Tell me your story. And I think that's a really interesting question to start with because it helps people start to rewind back to when they decided that they wanted to become a software engineer. The myriad of ways that people end up becoming a software engineer is just fascinating. But it also tells me a wee bit about what motivated them to become a software engineer and the path that they've taken to where they are today. And so I start with that. Other questions that I ask in that first one-on-one that help guide questions later on in my journey with them are things like, what do you think is working really well in our team today? And what do you think would be improved? And what do you love the best about your job? And what do you not like so much about your job? The purpose of these questions is not to then allow this person to only ever work on the things that they like doing and avoid all the things that they don't like doing but I'm looking for some common threads about inefficiencies or frustrations within the team. You know, nobody likes to come to work and be frustrated. I think if you start to sense that there is a lot of frustration within the team, then you need to investigate that a bit deeper and try and solve those things. As engineers, I think we do have a lot of frustrations when our pipelines are too slow or there are some unit tests that just randomly fail. Gosh, there's so many sorts of things like this that you don't have the access to the right technologies that you want to use and that makes your job a lot harder. And so... I tend to ask people, what do you find really frustrating and what are you spending time on that you wish you didn't have to spend time on? And what's really interesting is when I ask that question, most people, they don't have an answer for me straight away. And that's okay. They don't need to have an answer straight away. What I want to do is encourage them to think about it. So I say, let's chat about it in our next one-on-one. And whenever you get a little bit frustrated between now and then, just make a note of it so we can talk about it next time. And slowly but surely, I start getting these really interesting comments around a lack of process around something or that engineers are not invited to participate in the design phase of a project early enough, pipelines being too slow or unreliable. And that then leads on to me saying, all right, there's a perfectly valid insight. So what are you going to do about it? (laughs) So how can we make a change here? How can we reduce that frustration? Because you're probably not the only one feeling this. And then I encourage that person to maybe go and speak to other people about it and go and do some research about how they can improve this or why is it that this thing in particular frustrates you? I guess in that way, I'm really trying to get people to think deeper than just the obvious thing is for people to say to me, what skills do I need to learn to become a better software engineer? And I don't have a perfect answer for you there. You know, I can maybe suggest some particular technologies that are very popular in the market right now that maybe we use, maybe we might use in the future, But that's probably not as impactful as getting you to a phrase I use is to be the supply to the unmet demand. There are generally a bunch of unmet demands within an organization, perhaps even within your own team. Things that you could make a huge difference on if only you just go and do it. You don't need to seek permission. If there's time, just go and do it and you'll make someone's life so much easier. They'll be grateful for it and they'll thank you for it. And you'll have had some impact and created a positive experience with somebody. And that's how you end up growing and being noticed, eventually, hopefully getting promoted for it. So there's a virtuous cycle to be had from just asking questions and making people reflect on what makes them happy, what drains them, what frustrates them, where they get their energy. I think that sums it up. Right. I really, really love that. In particular, the phrase, be the supply to the unmet demand. And I think I can relate to this a lot of times as well. Many people actually took frustrations for granted. For example, like we're mentioning, you know, the pipeline is slow. Okay, maybe it is slow. There's nothing that we can do about it. It's just slow. Or the tests are breaking. Yeah, it just breaks from time to time. There's nothing (laughs) we can do about it. So I think, yeah, this is a good mindset to always think, okay, why is this happening? Is there anything that we can always improve and make it more effective, more efficient, and maybe also have a group gatherings brainstorming how to improve on things that they don't like as a team. So I really, really love that. 